Welcome to the Carl Liner Academy. In this segment, we are looking at the CTR-7 resistant spot welder. Through the course of the video, we will go over the basic features, controls, and operation of the welder to get you started. A working understanding of resistance welders and OEM procedures is expected. The weld process will be covered in greater detail as a part of the in-shop, hands-on training. Let's begin. The CTR-7 is a squeeze-type resistant spot welder. That means that by running electric current through steel sheets that are tightly clamped together, the metal's natural resistance to that flow generates heat. That heat melts the metal where the squeeze pressure of the electrodes forges it into a solid weld nugget. Advanced high-strength steels are heat sensitive and in correct settings will weaken the surrounding metal. The CTR-7 provides quality spot welds using sophisticated software with semi-automatic controls. Other benefits of spot welding are quicker repairs compared to plug welding and that it replicates the OEM's appearance. As in any repair situation, please ensure your safety before preparing to weld. Welders must be used away from moisture or chemicals. Be aware of the potential trip hazard created by cords and welding cables. Vehicles need to be fully protected before welding, including isolating the electrical system. Be aware of the weight of the C-gun and arms. Select proper personal safety equipment, including clothing, gloves, and eye protection. Reference the instruction manual for complete safety information. Prior to welding, set up the machine by connecting the CTR-7 to the shop air. Plug the welder into the receptacle. The CTR-7 uses three phases, 208 volt or 460 volt power, depending on the model. A blue ring will appear around the on-off button, indicating that there is power to the welder. Be sure to check coolant level before and after each use. To begin welding, power the unit on and wait for the screen to populate. The welder is ready to weld, even though the fan and coolant pump are not running. They will start as soon as the trigger is pressed the first time. Several modes for welding are available. The Auto 1 option allows for welding as determined by the total thickness. Pressing the up or down arrow, the technician sets the combined thickness of all the layers and the welder will automatically set the parameters needed to make the weld. When welding material thicker than 5 millimeters, the welder will provide notification that the air pressure must be adjusted. Air pressure readings are displayed in the lower left corner of the screen. The top set of numbers display the required pressure, while the bottom numbers indicate the measured values. Turn the air pressure regulator up or down to adjust. When you are within range of the desired value, the message will disappear. The CTR-7's Auto 2 mode allows you to enter the specific combination of materials being welded. Enter the thickness and the type of material for each layer, which will allow the welder to determine the parameters for that unique application. To switch between layers, continue pressing the arrow to the right. Use the left and right arrows to move between fields and the up and down arrows to change the value. The display will cycle through each layer's settings. Depending on the combination of metals and thicknesses, a pressure adjustment may be needed. A third mode is available, which is the manual mode. Refer to the instruction manual for additional information on manual mode and its uses. Each mode features feedback of the weld quality. A green check mark indicates a proper weld and allows you to continue welding. If the weld should fail, a red X appears on the screen and further welding is suspended until acknowledgement of the message. This is done from the gun by quickly pulling the trigger twice or from the welder by pressing any of the buttons on the display. The CTR-7 has three pre-pulse modes for different materials. Pre-pulsing helps the welder establish an electrical connection between the layers. The button located on the left side of the screen allows you to cycle through the options. The first option, ZN, is for zinc-coated or galvanized parts. ED is for cases where there is a factory E-coat, primarily on the inner surfaces. 
ED Plus is used when there are multiple layers of E-coat or for weld bonding. The pre-pulse can also be turned off. Always refer to your OEM procedures for proper preparation prior to welding. The CTR7 comes standard with weld logger documentation software. To access, press the weld logger button on the top right of the screen. This brings up a screen that allows the user to create a work order. Work orders can be closed, reopened, and viewed. Once complete, work orders are copied to a USB flash drive and printed from a PC. Car O-Liner's exclusive ATOM is also available. The ATOM adapts the CTR7 C-Gun to an X configuration for additional accessibility with no loss in squeeze pressure. The CTR7 has four different arms of varying sizes, allowing the ability to reach different areas of the vehicle. The CTR7 has a separate coolant button that stops the pump, allowing the arms to be changed without shutting down the machine. Each arm has unique combinations of electrodes in match sets that assure the correct gap and move that gap within the opening of the C-arm. Refer to the chart on the electrode box for assistance. Each electrode cap holder is stamped with a number for easy reference. When installing the electrode, apply a small amount of the copper grease supplied with the welder to the threads. Always make sure that the beveled edge of the cooling tube is inserted first. To change the C-arm, hang the gun on the welder and hit the coolant button to turn off the pump. Loosen the locking handle on the swivel ring and rotate the gun so the arm is facing up. Disconnect the cooling hoses. Unlatch the retaining clip from the hinge pin by sliding it up. Turn the locking handle 180 degrees. Lift the C-arm and pull it out from the front of the gun. To reinstall, insert at a 30 degree angle until it reaches the hinge pin. Then rock the arm down into place. Turn the locking handle, making sure it is tight and reconnect the hoses. To access the multi-function options, press the tool button to the left of the screen. The multi-function gun attaches to the C-gun rather than to the machine itself. The cable clamp is placed between the electrodes, then the C-gun trigger is pulled, locking it in place. Plug the command cable into the back of the gun. By selecting the single side welding option on the display, the welder sets the starting parameters. When finished, pull the trigger on the C-Gun again to release the electrodes. To ensure the CTR-7 is always in working order, proper maintenance is required. Pay close attention to electrode caps. The cleanliness and shape of the electrodes are critical to the quality of the weld. Before beginning to clean the caps, unplug the machine as a safeguard. Periodically remove buildup on the caps with a scotch bright pad. For more severe buildup, a tip dresser or flat file can be used, taking particular care to maintain the shape. Once the caps become damaged, they must be replaced. The caps are press fit on the cap holder. To remove the cap, place a 17 millimeter wrench on the holder, clamp the cap with vice grips, and give a quick quarter turn in either direction. Place the new cap onto the electrode and tap to seal. The welder will press it into place with the first weld. Refer to the owner's manual for more information. Car O-Liner performs scheduled maintenance on the CTR-7 and other welders to ensure your machine is working as expected every time. For more information on the CTR-7 or any other Car O-Liner product, please contact your local distributor or visit car-o-liner.com.